Good morning. Nothing like waking up to some parts from Japan. Up garage. Damn, this thing is heavy as heck. This is something that I wasn't looking for, but found a really good deal. So I decided to pick it up. So, this is what I was looking for originally. So I looked online and I found a set of actuators, or like a whole brand new, not a whole brand new, but a brand used actuator. So I'm gonna go ahead and wait for that to come in. But as I was browsing the internet, as one does, I came across something that I think would be pretty useful for this car. So let's go ahead and open it up. Please this is blurred out. All right, let's check this out, guys. So like I said, I wasn't planning on getting this, but this was such an unbelievably good deal that I could not pass up this offer. And I think it's pretty dope. So I can even find opening. I'm gonna have to tear into it. So these are some used and abused, but it's actually some cut knuckles. It's some cut knuckles from an R34. So I was either gonna go and get some knuckles made or buy some already made knuckles. And I was looking at the GK Tech ones, but those are like, I think it's like 700 bucks or 799 right now. And I was able to buy some cut knuckles. Believe it or not, these were less than $300 shipped straight to my door. And I ordered them earlier in the week. They shipped them out on Wednesday. It is now Friday and they're here. So, I believe I got a really good deal. Um, I'm not gonna install them today. 300 bucks for some Japanese JDM homemade cut knuckles. I mean, you can't tell me that that's not freaking sick, right? So I'm pretty stoked on that. I feel like there's some type of history with this knuckle too that kind of intrigued me. Um, I just feel like there's like some grassroots drifter in Japan that was sliding on his R34 and he needed some money so he sold these to Up Garage and now they belong to me. So I believe there's a little bit of history in here which is what intrigues me about these knuckles instead of me going and buying like a brand new set of GK Tech or professionally made knuckles. I feel like this right here has like character, you know? And I can't wait to put this on the R34. But in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and finish up just getting the car back to regular as far as like getting the, the door locks and stuff done. Hopefully by the time this video comes out, that's already finished. Um, but I am currently waiting on it to come in from Japan as well. So luckily when I needed one of this, there was one set on Yahoo Japan. I'm debating about welding a, the diff in the car or if I'm just gonna go ahead and put like a two-way in it or... I'm kind of like on the fence because we typically like to build things on a budget here, which there's nothing wrong with. But at the same time, it's like, it's a Skyline. It's one of my dream cars. So I kind of want to put a little bit more money into it. But you know, like if I can find good deals like this, of course I'm going to do it. Like I said, guys, we're just going to keep chipping away at all these little things that the Skyline needs and that I'm finding out. I, uh, that's just how it goes with some old JDM cars, right? These things are like 25, 30 years old at this point. So everything that's going to break is going to start breaking now. But I'm just glad to be able to own a piece of JDM history. Skyline was a car that I never thought I would own. But now that I'm a little bit older, I have a little bit of money and I can, you know, drive these cars that I thought were so cool when I was younger. Anyway, that's the speaker right here, if you can see it. So literally, we're just going to unplug it. I'm going to pop off the wiring harness. Then we're going to just pop the speaker off. We're just going to pry this thing off. We don't need this bracket. We're literally just gonna stick the speaker straight to the pillar here. We are going to be very careful. Um, we probably will be breaking the clips, but 
We just need to take this thing off. We got the speaker off. Now we just need to pull because this is what we're gonna use to plug back into the factory side of it. I have these tweeters here. Where are they? These little cheapy tweeters off of Amazon. We're gonna go ahead and put this in the car right now. So the tweeter that is in this pillar right here is blown. The tweeters look like this. So this is like barely even a speaker. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and replace them with this. Now this whole thing is not going to fit under this mesh right here. So we're actually gonna disassemble this and just use the speaker portion itself. We don't need any, we don't need any of this extra bezels and stuff like that. There, twist it, pop it off. Pretty much, this is just what we're gonna install, this little tweeter. So this kit also comes with these double-sided foam tape sticky thing, and I'm just gonna stick it to the back of the speaker itself. And then we're literally just gonna stick this straight on the pillar with no bezel. Yeah, it works guys, it works, it works, it works. All right, let me go ahead and plug this back up. Alrighty guys, so join me next video to figure out what else is wrong with this car. But all jokes aside, I really like this car. I really enjoy doing these little fixes. It feels like it makes a little progress every single time, even though I keep finding little things that are wrong with it. But I know that every single time that I replace something with something new or better, it probably won't break again. So, with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, sticking around with us. We really appreciate you guys. Hope you guys are enjoying the content. Make sure you guys like and subscribe, and we'll catch you guys in the next one, all right? Peace out and stay good.